We need your help. At DMDII, we're trying to build a broad-based coalition around cybersecurity topics in manufacturing um, in a number of different ways, and we are actively seeking partners. I'm Stephen Lamarga. This is IMTS-TV. We are at MC2 2016. I'm here with Jim Bartley. Thanks, Jim. Hi. All right. So uh, what is UI Labs and what is DMDII? UI Labs is a Chicago-based, not-for-profit, uh, 501c3 company that specializes in public-private partnerships. Um, so we help problem definition, we help bring the right people to, together to solve problems um, in a sort of multi-party engineering kind of way. And uh, right now, the, uh, the labs part of UI Labs uh, consists of two. There's City Digital and there's also DMDII. Uh, which is the one that I'll be um, focusing on for this conversation. Okay. Um, the DMDII is the Digital Manufacturing and Design Innovation Institute. Uh, you know, I'll just give you a brief history. Back in 2010, 11, 12, um, there was a lot of consternation about American competitiveness in manufacturing. Um, the export-import ratio, the trade gap, I mean, a um, lot of uh, negative trends. And so the White House tasked the Office of Science and Technology Policy to go do some studies and, and come back with some recommendations. Um, they went to Germany, looked at the Freihauer Institutes, and just all over the place, um, looked at all kinds of things. And they came back and said, um, you know, you need to launch a national network of manufacturing institutes. And so they, they started with their pilot institute, America Makes, that's uh, focused on 3D printing technologies and it's based out of uh, Ohio. Um, and we were either second or third, depending on how you, how you count. Um, I think they came out the same day. Um, <clears throat> but uh, our focus is, the, uh, is digital manufacturing and accelerating the shift in this sector towards manufacturing. Um, you know, we're based in the Chicagoland area. We're a membership organization, so we've got over 200 members from industry and academia um, that help uh, shape and identify the technology roadmap that we're working with those partners to invest in. All right, and what's your role at DMDII? I'm director of, the, of what we call the Digital Manufacturing Commons. Uh, <clears throat> most of the work that we do at DMDII uh, in terms of project development and R&D is, uh, is done by our partners. Um, you know, we're the, we're the funding source, we provide project management resources and, and uh, framework for doing these things, but they really do most of the work. So Boeing or, or John Deere or, you know, Microsoft, those kind of folks, um, as well as many small and medium um, companies. There is one exception, and this is the Digital Manufacturing Commons. It's an internal platform uh, that we're, we're building uh, in partnership with General Electric. So, you know, as we develop all these great new tools and technologies for digital manufacturing, how do you get access to them? I like to think of the Digital Manufacturing Commons as sort of your, your gateway to digital manufacturing. It's an online web portal um, where you can go, you can sign up, co-create, um, search this marketplace and find tools and technologies that are going to be useful in your day-to-day -day business. Okay. What's the vision for the future of the Digital Manufacturing Commons? Yeah, it's a, it's a platform that we're pretty excited about, and, you know, I think the vision is, is pretty grand. Millions of people using this software every day, creating their own manufacturing recipes, um, you know, um, or you could think of it loosely as an app store for manufacturing, but millions of people every day uh, using this site, creating derivative works, linking things together, um, governments uh, uh, using it for understanding policy and, and externalities in the manufacturing sector. Um, seasteaders like NASA and uh, urban policy planners, uh, other folks could be using this to make decisions around city planning. Um, and all the way down to the, the manufacturing line when somebody finally decides which part uh, they want to produce, um, you know, can you link that into a network of manufacturers to make it digitally accessible? So what are... Um some of the near-term goals for DMC, Digital Manufacturing Commons. Yeah, so we're, um, we're about halfway through a two-year development cycle. Uh, at the end of that, um, you know, and as I mentioned, we're working on building that with our partner, General Electric Global Research. At the end of that period, 
um, they'll go away and, and DMDII is the sole owner operator of this public hosted instance. So we're about halfway through that right now, we, um, which is far enough that we're starting to get some interesting things happening. Um, we do have some big milestones coming up. Uh, we're planning on doing a big hackathon in June around uh, manufacturing applications. Uh, we may do a price challenge later in the fall. Uh, and we're getting close to hitting a release um, that's targeted towards enabling commerce on the site. So if you build an application and you put it in the digital manufacturing commons, you know, maybe you want to charge people um, per use or you want to um, do some kind of freemium model for business, so those kinds of things. How do you ensure the security of uh, digital manufacturing commons? Yeah, so we're uh, doing all of the standard industry best practices. Uh, you know, we, we've got a baseline that we'll be hosting in this, um, in our publicly hosted instance. Um, but if that's not enough for some people, um, and we suspect it won't be, uh, we have made intentional choices to decouple part, uh, critical parts of the architecture. Um, so if you, don't, if you don't fully trust our public version with you know, your most sensitive data, like your jet engine mm -hmm. manufacturing components, um, okay, set it, it's an open source project, set it up behind your shop, or, um, and do a totally privately hosted instance, or do a public-private um, mix where you've got some data in our public instance, um, or you've got uh, some private data in your instance that you, you're able to push for a one-time use, um, or you can have private algorithms in, um, behind your cloud, and you can take public data and pull it down. Um, so there's, you know, basically our approach is um, we're going we're gonna to have this baseline, um, publicly hosted instance, but then you can layer on whatever additional security controls around it that, that you want or need for your organization. Who do you see as the ultimate user group for digital manufacturing commons and how would they use it? Yeah, I think there's uh, lots of, of um, different demographs um, in, in segmented user communities in the, the universe of, of the manufacturing sector. Uh, a key one for us is the small to medium enterprises. Uh, mom and pop shops that are, are making parts. Um, you know, there's a long tail of those people and um, tools that make them uh, able to do, do something better, faster, cheaper uh, is a huge target. Uh, the ability to get a cost estimate faster through, through online tools or be able to qualify a part, um, a, you know, a digital design. Um, so that you know what it's going to come out looking like and what its performance parameters are going to, going to do without having to invest in, in heavyweight desktop tools. Um, those are some key technologies uh, for that demograph. The, some of the larger companies like GE Global Research and, and, and Rolls-Royce, they see this as a way to connect their um, sprawling supply base, um, give folks on a common, common core tool set. The software companies, I think, are finding that it, it may open up new markets for them. Uh, for academics and researchers, this is a great way to um, bring in innovation from the edges and connect with real-world use cases. Okay. And um, what security trends are you getting from your uh, members at DMDII? Yeah, so we, um, we do some cybersecurity-focused initiatives at DMDII. We recently had a couple of project calls um, around that, the, some of those things. And, you know, we do periodic workshops, um, so we've got, just got a constant stream of uh, people describing what they're encountering and, and the challenges they're encountering day to day. Uh, you know, there's, we've got uh, one of the biggest ones, I would say, is just the um, challenge of dealing with the manufacturing environment. Lots of legacy equipment, and this stuff uh, tends to have a very long life cycle. Um, and so they get out of date, they're old. Um, patching is challenging. You know, these, uh, uh, a production supply line gets certified to make something. And once you've done that, you know, they, these things live by configuration management. And uh, making a change to that baseline may trigger a recertification, which is hugely expensive. Um, so I think we heard in the panel this morning, you know, somebody mentioned uh, uh, a shop they found that had a, a, an interface for a machine that was running Windows 3.1. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and those are the kinds of things you encounter, um, and so that's that's a huge challenge. Um, you know, finding more advanced strategies to fight cyber is challenging in this industry because equipment is expensive, and the the uh, resources people have invested are being used operationally. So there's no um, there's not a lot of 
room for national test beds where people can go and, and try and, and do things to disrupt or, or attack. Um, supply chain is a big one. Uh, uh, you know, I mentioned this in the panel. The reality is even the big companies that might be doing very well at cybersecurity in their own enterprise, that, that enterprise now extends into all of these um, smaller companies that are tier two, three, four, five suppliers. Uh, and so keeping all of that supply chain risk management um, in line is a big challenge as well. So what's DMDII doing about cybersecurity? Yeah, we, uh, as I mentioned, we had a project call um, for cybersecurity in, in intelligent machines. Um, you know, topics like uh, a, a more robust uh, operating system. Um, we also had one recently for a retrofit kit for legacy equipment. So how do you take some of that older equipment and start to um, turn it on in the Internet of Things? And there was, you know, um, a cybersecurity uh, element uh, about that as well. Uh, we did just recently respond to the DOD's RFP and also the NIST RFI for a new National Manufacturing Institute. This would be an, uh, an NMI focused on cybersecurity and supply chain. Um, and so we're excited about the possibility for, for that. Um, and we're actively seeking partners for that as well. So if uh, people are interested in, um, you know, uh, being part of the solution, we are trying to bring together a, um, a critical mass around those topics. So what kind of companies are you looking to partner with, and how would they contact you? Yeah, I think the door's wide open. Um, and it's not just companies, but manufacturers, uh, software companies, security companies, um, academic institutions, even state, local, federal partners uh, that, that have this as a topic of interest. Uh, we're open to any and all of those. Again, we're trying to build a, a broad um, consortium here. And uh, if um, people were interested in that, they could contact me. They could go to our website um, at uilabs.org and contact just about anybody there. But I think there's a, a, a particular contact us button that they could use. Sure. Jim, thanks a lot for talking with me today. I'm Stephen Lamarca for IMTS-TV.